all right everybody welcome back to the next video and uh, as you can see we are inside the truck this time I've been having an issue with my speedometer ever since vacation back in December when I uh, went down to North Carolina and for some reason after making the trip back it's a 12 hour drive because I make uh, at least three stops on the way back so I never run the truck more than two and a half or hours or so uh, at a time but apparently the speedometer motor did not like being run that long for so many hours at a time um, the rest of the winter it was uh, going up in increments it'd go up to like it'd be at zero it'd go to like five it wouldn't sweep up to five it'd just jump up to five jump up to 11 uh, so today we're going to be uh, replacing the motor for the speedometer and I know I tore showed you guys a little bit of how to take the bezel off to get to the instrument cluster last year when I t showed you how to switch to the Cadillac Escalade gauge cluster but um, I might just forego taking this apart on video because um, there's already a video out there showing you what to do because all you have is your electrical connections for your switches here my 4x4 airbag cargo light and my train horns and over on the other side the light switch which is the one I showed you the last one I showed you to unplug to remove the bezel so I'm going to pause it real quick and take all that apart to get to the actual gauge cluster and uh, then we'll probably move to the tailgate where I set up my workbench like normal so give me a few minutes to get this apart and I'll be right back okay so here we are now I did plug all my switches back in the only reason I did that is because with my bigger tires um, I deal with a calibration issue and uh, I've had uh, I used my scan tool to adjust the tire size for these bigger tires and then I adjusted the new physical needle itself so when you turn the ignition on it doesn't stay at zero it goes up to like one so my goal is to get it back to that position but uh, what I do is I go on the highway with my GPS which is in my phone so I can't make videos of that and I go I set and when the GPS says 70 I set the cruise and I watch the needle and when the needle is close if it's a little under or a little above 70 then I'll pull over and I'll pop the needle off and depending on if it's like a little over or a little under depends on which way I adjust it I turn it off turn it back on with no needle on it so I know that it'll be at the zero and if it's if it needs to go up to 70 then I'll put it up above like it is now if it's faster and it needs to slow down, then I'll take it back to the peg and hope I get it right. And I'll run up and down the interstate a few times. And uh, as in the other videos, you have one, two, three, four, seven millimeter bolts to remove. Um, I've already taken them out. Like I said, I just uh, I want to get the get to the motor replacement because I've already pulled my dash apart and made videos on that. So after you get the bolts out, it just slides right out because your electrical connection is right there it's embedded in the dash and it's in the back of the cluster it just slides in and the bolts make the connection so we are going to uh, get out of the truck sorry about the jiggliness and we are going to go to the tailgate slash workbench I'm down here in front of the garage for the Chevelle because it's been it's been raining today and really really windy so I had the big door open in efforts to quell the uh, wind now I have my other 125 mile hour bomber gauge cluster here already that I never put back together after showing you the odometer video because I didn't need to put it back together um, So, first thing you're going to have to do is take the plastic cover off. 
there's one tab here it just pops it right up and there's two tabs on the other side once you get them out the cover just lifts right off and that exposes your gauge cluster now what it was doing was in especially in the cold it would just jump around it start at zero then it jumped to five jump up just jump 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 and then it would jump down instead of just smoothly going up the gauges but now even in the hot uh, time once it gets to 65 it doesn't read anymore until you get up over 70 but when you slow down it doesn't read until you get back down to like 60 so it's got a dead spot in the actual motor so I'm going to uh, take the uh, new old speedometer out of here and pop the needle off. It just pops off. And the back side is where it, the uh, connection is. And there's two small torque bits holding the motor in. And you got to remember your orientation. There's a number here on this side. Down here it says S, S13. S is for speedometer, I think. But it's uh, the torque size is T8. And remember, it's especially remember that the numbers here are on the bottom side of your gauge cluster. So you make sure you put it in right so it connects to the internals properly. You just take the little screws out, try not to lose them, there's one, there's two, and then it literally just slides right out of there. And that's all it is. These are the old air-cooled motors. Or air-core motors. So I'm going to set that here. Out of the way. And I left my flathead screwdriver in the truck. And you guys, uh, if you watch the other videos taking this out you know what I do is just take a flathead screwdriver a little small one and slowly pry on the plastic because it is old and brittle and I just work my way along the edge and pop the gauges out of their seats inside Then the whole gauge pack will come out and there is an electrical connection for the uh, odometer which I showed you last year too. totally comes off I'm trying to get the best angle for you guys and just like the other one you just pull the needle off just like that I love these brand new needles I put on last year they're so much easier to read it's the same with the other one flip it over and you take your two little eight T8 torque screws out.
Hopefully the wind isn't shaking this camera too much. I tried to buffer it with the big door being open, but I don't know if it'll work, if it's working or not. So, after taking your second screw out, you can just pull the motor out, just like that. But I don't know if you can see the numbers, if it'll focus on them. So then you take your replacement motor, whether you buy one on eBay or whatever, and you put it right back in the same way it came out. Make sure there's nothing in there. Because there was some gunk in there on mine. And you just reset your screws. You don't got to torque them too much. It's only plastic. I have to remind myself that. So then the replacement speedometer motor's in. So then you plug back in your odometer connection. As you know, you want to work in your odometer. And then it's just uh, pressing it back in to its spaces. And that's it for the speedometer installation. I'm going to pause it again so we can get back in the truck. And uh, I can put it back together and I can give you a, kind of a little demonstration of uh, what we're dealing with. Because I'm not going to be able to put the dashboard back together until after I do the calibration on the highway. But I'll, I'll get a little bit more on that because I will put the needle on approximately where it was. So just give me a second and we'll be back. Okay, we're back. Now, I did not put the clear cover on either, because that will just slide in to the two holes in the one hole over here. But you can see better the bolts here, here, and here, and down here. So those are the four bolts that hold this in. And like I said, once you slide it in, the connection's made. So, uh, but I can't put the face on until after I put the, uh, get the speedometer calibrated. So what I do is I'll turn the ignition on. That way I know the motor goes up to the zero. And I had it. If I can do this. I had it about one mile an hour. over I didn't push it on all the way we turned it off nope it's not there we'll pull it back off turn it off cycle it again This is the fun part here. And shut it off. Turn it back on. It's just going to stay at zero, so we're still off. Cycle it again. This is what takes a lot of the time when you're doing this if you're unfamiliar with it. And 
drop the needle on the floor. Cycle it again. Okay, shut it off. Cycle it through. Still a little off. Cycle it through. Shut it off, cycle it through, and it just is not liking it today. Shut it off, cycle it through. It's not doing it today. Which means I'm probably gonna have a lot of fun doing it out on the highway too. Cycle it on. Cycle it on. Oh, that's close. That's pretty close. Cycle it on. Shut it down. Cycle it on. Alright, that's a touch over, but for now. I think we're gonna call that good because uh, once I get on a highway I'll be able to tell more uh, how much more adjustment I need so uh, we're gonna call this video done for today and uh, I've got dirt spots on my nice white gauge because my knuckles are not exactly clean so after I get this set, I'm going to have to clean and wipe this whole face plate up again before I put the glass on it. But uh, anyways, that's how that this works for any of the gauges. I just happen to need a speedometer gauge. So uh, if y'all need to know how to replace the speedometer gauge or any of the other gauges, it's that little tiny T8 torque screw head. And uh, the time and patience to play with the needles. If you watch my gauge cluster replacement you'll see how I set the needles when I put this uh, face cover on because uh, there's a certain way to do the voltage in the fuel but if you're just doing oil or temperature or speedometer or tachometer they as soon as you turn the key they go to zero well the oil pressure is being kind of stupid but it always is <clears throat> but everything works so and actually the speedometer went up to two so I'm definitely gonna have to get out on the highway and get that adjusted properly in the next couple of days I'll probably do that because it's kind of rainy today I'm taking a few minutes between rains cycles and uh, making a video for y'all so if you like it comment subscribe please that helps me a lot um, I don't get any monetary funds from YouTube. I don't have enough subscribers or enough video hours watched or however they monetize with YouTube. Um, so uh, I'm nowhere near enough subscribers and that's fine. I'm not looking for money for this. I'm just looking to help you guys, you know, fix things on your own, at least little things. So uh, till the next one, y'all have fun.